Hey everyone, my name is Ishan and I welcome you all to this session. In this session, we will be going over the most common and popular git commands. We will go through this session in two parts. In the first part, we shall learn the top 10 git commands and in the second part, we shall witness another 5 commands that are commonly used. But before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to your YouTube channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let us first have a look at all the top 10 commands that we will be covering today. We shall see the git init command followed by the git commit command and the git add command. Then we shall see the git status command and the git merge command. Moving forth, we will check the git push command, git pull command and the git clone command. Towards the end, we shall learn the git branch command and the git checkout command. The first command that we will see is the git init command. The git init command is used to initialize a blank repository. The command when executed creates a .git folder in the current working directory. The .git folder created will be a hidden folder and that folder can only be seen by enabling the settings of viewing the hidden files. If we get into this folder, we will see a bunch of directories and configurations. Post this command, something called the master will appear on the screen. Whenever a git repository is created for the first time, it creates a branch. The branch name is master, which is why we see a master on the screen. The second command is the git commit command. The git commit command is used to save changes to the local repository. The command helps you keep a record of all the changes made. The changes that are made are the ones that are added to the staging area. So it depends on us which file we want to commit. The command used before the git commit command is the git add command. So the next command we will see is the git add command. The git add command is used to add the files to the staging area. When the git command is used with a full stop, it adds all the files in the repository to the staging area. We can see that before the add command, there were untracked files. But after the git add command, we can see the files are added to the staging area. We can also see the git status command is used here. So the next command that we must see is the git status command. The git status command is used to display the state of the working directory and the staging area. It lets us see which changes have been staged, which haven't been staged and which files aren't being tracked yet. The git status command simply shows what is happening with git add and git commit. The status messages include relevant instructions for staging and unstaging the files. We can see on the screen that git status first shows untracked files and after the git add is executed, the status command shows the status of the files as there are no commits yet and the file name that was initially red in color becomes green now. Next, let's have a look at the git merge command. The process of merging can be defined as a way of putting a forked history back together. The git merge command is used to integrate different branches into a single branch. Here we can see the git merge command lets you take the independent lines of development created by the git branch and integrate them into a single branch. The next command we shall have a look at is the git push command. The git push command is used to push the local repository content to a remote repository. After a local repository has been modified, a push command is used to share the modifications with the remote team members. Here we can see when we use git push hyphen u origin master, the objects are being pushed from the local repository to a remote repository. Followed by the git push command, let's have a look at the git pull command. Git pull command is a combination of git fetch followed by git merge command. The command is used to fetch and merge the changes from the remote repository to the local repository. The git fetch command downloads content from the required remote repository and the git merge command combines multiple sequences of commits into a single branch. Here on the screen we can see the git pull command is pulling the files from the remote repository called the first repo as we can see from the link followed by the git pull command. The next command is the git clone command. The git clone command 
as the name suggests, is used to create a clone or a copy of the target repository. The command creates a copy of the target repository in a new directory at a new place. Here, we are using the clone or download link of a repository with the clone command. Hence, you can create a new directory to put files allowing the same code to have multiple versions running on the same machine. Moving forth, the next command is the git branch command. The term branch refers to the independent line of development. The git branch command is used to create, list, rename and delete branches. There are several ways the branch command may be used. Sometimes to create a branch or find the list of branches or to rename a branch or maybe to delete a branch. Here we can see the first command is used to create a branch with the name blr branch. The second command states that we are into that branch now and we are working on the blr branch. The tenth command we shall see is the git checkout command. The git checkout command works together with the git branch command. The command enables the navigation between the branches. Here we can see git checkout master command. The command states that we are switching onto the master branch from some other command. While we do execute these commands, we can see the files in the local repository fluctuating. When we execute the git checkout blr branch command, we are switching back onto the blr branch from the master branch that we were initially on. Now, when we know the top 10 commands, let's have a look at another 5 commands that are used along with these commands while we work on git. The first command in this section is the git config command. The git config command is used to set configurations like name, email id, etc. This information should be provided as soon as the git is installed. Since this information is used by git at every commit. When we begin working with a git bash, the first command we generally execute is the git config user.name command and git config user email id command. The second command in this section is a git diff command. As the name suggests, git diff command is used to show the differences between the changes made on a file. The command is a multi-use command that runs the functions on different git data sources. Moving forth, the next command is the git log command. The git log command is used to view the previous commits that have taken place in the git project. It is a utility tool to have a look at the history of everything that happens to a repository. When the git log command is executed, the list that appears on the screen is in the reverse chronological order, which means it shows the most recent action on the top and the last action at the bottom. The fourth command is the git reset command. The command is used to undo the local changes that are made to the state of a git repository. The command has three primary forms, soft, mixed and hard. The last command we will see today is the git rebase command. The term rebasing refers to moving or combining a sequence of commits. The git rebase command is used to integrate changes from one branch to another. And so with this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you guys found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.